Every good thing in this world started with a dream. The Labour government also have a dream. To bring £63 billion of investment to the UK, more films like Wonka, but also sparking growth in everything from biotech to energy and wind farms. I've got an idea. Where do we start? This man has an idea. Growth is the cause that binds us together. The shared endeavour of prosperity. Listening to the speech was the man behind DP World. They'd pulled out of the event after P&O, one of their companies, was called a rogue operator by the transport secretary. Your Excellency, did you receive a, an apology? The Prime Minister was forced to intervene and smooth over the relationship, not least because of the £1 billion London Gateway investment. Private sector investment is the way we rebuild our country. And what of regulation? We will rip up the bureaucracy that blocks investment. We will march through the institutions. This is where £40 trillion comes to rub shoulders. The government say today's summit landed £63 billion of that money, though not all of that is actually new. The bigger question is how much of a difference this will make on the ground. Just west of London, Marlow Films has been trying to develop a £750 million state-of-the-art studio to take advantage of the growing number of international film projects looking to be made here. The site they want to develop? A disused quarry off the M40. I would say arts and culture have to be absolutely the heart of what we do. I mean, it's a superpower for us. It's, a, it's, our, it's our way of being in the world. But despite backing from box office titans like James Cameron, the bid for Marlowe's development was rejected by the local council. The joy of the creative economy is that it's growing at double-digit growth. Los Angeles is now experiencing a 30-year low in employment in the sector, and we're pretty much at the peak of 30-year high in investment. I think people have a habit of liking British content, and we lose that at our peril, we really do. Last week, Marlow became one of the first and by far the largest planning application to get hauled in by Angela Rayner as part of the shake-up of planning rules. Business leaders today said they needed to see more action like that. One of the things that I've said to the Prime Minister and to the Chancellor both is make sure that we don't have layers upon layers upon layers of regulation. I think the words and the vision are quite encouraging. But the details are going to matter, and execution matters the most. We've been hearing some good policies today, and now you know, we hope that the spirit of this carries on in delivering those you know, much-needed reforms. I thought it was amazing what they're saying, but the devil is always in the operation and the implementation. I think this summit today is an opportunity to hear from government their total commitment to growing our economy. Bet on Britain. That's the message today. In this room, they like the sound of this Labour government. But it won't be until the budget that they really know where they stand. We need more investment into Britain. Uh, we lag behind our competitors, our neighbours, our trading partners when it comes to investment as a share of our economy. We have to turn that around if we're going to uh, seize the opportunities in industries from clean energy to life sciences to tech and AI. But we don't trade off the rights of working people against that investment. Is there a risk, though, you're trying to have your cake and eat it? You know, the Prime Minister was talking about now is the moment to invest in the UK. But you've been telling us that the UK economy is doing really badly. Is there a conflict there? We're turning this economy around. Already we've brought stability back to the economy. A stability when it comes to decision-making and policy. A stability when it comes to protecting and enhancing the public finances but right across those Britain. Those partnerships don't always work. Like, look at P&O ferries. They fired 800 people unceremoniously. You've talked about Macquarie today a lot. But they are actually the architects of the terrible deck structure that stands behind Thames Water. It doesn't always work. Or is it the government policy now, as long as you bring your chequebook, we'll bend the rules? 
Well, if you take, for example, Make Work Pay, uh, we set out legislation last week that will end fire and rehire and will ban exploitative zero-hour contracts. And all businesses who create jobs and invest in Britain will have to abide by those new rules. Would you call really it important. out? Would you be brave enough to call it out if well, businesses don't follow the rules? Well, they have to. And if they don't follow the rules, they'd be in breach of them. But the previous Conservative government but allowed But so is your those... transport secretary, Helia, is she brave or unprofessional? Well, Helia, under the Conservative government, it was possible to fire and rehire and to have exploitative zero-hour contracts. Uh, that is ending under this Labour government, but it's up to government to set the framework within which businesses operate. That framework changes under a Labour government to offer that security and dignity uh, for working people. But we do want business investment into Britain. I make no apology for that. The loving was in full force, but the budget could change the mood with even more hints that it's business taxes that could be the ones that are set to rise. Well, earlier I spoke to Andrea Rossi, the CEO of investment company M&G, who are one of the sponsors of today's summit, and I started by asking him what he thought had changed to suddenly make Britain a better place to invest. Well, it's, 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 it's very clear. I mean, there are three things in my view. First, there is a sense of, of stability going forward, and I think that's key. Secondly, uh, we have a clarity of a very you know, industrial strategy going forward. And third, I think the most important thing, there is a relentless focus on growth. Just explain what you mean by stability, because surely there is a lot of uncertainty around what the government's going to do on tax and regulation and all these things. I mean, it's all talk so far. You don't actually know what's going to happen. Well, but you need to see it from a, from a relative perspective. I mean, you have to see first where we came from. And clearly, you know, if you look after Brexit, after COVID, after also, also govern, governmental instability in the UK, we're certainly in a much better place now. But so, so are you moving your own funds into Britain, away from other places? We are uh, very, one of the largest investors in the UK. We have over 100 billion sterling invested here between private assets uh, and, and public assets. Uh, I would say you know, we represent 4.6 million savers, UK savers, and of course also several international, uh, international investors. Their appetite has increased towards, towards the UK in the last six months. So yes, we're representing them. I would say we're increasing our exposure to the UK. There's quite a lot of talk about regulation. How important is that to people making their investment decisions? Regulation is important, uh, and I always say you need to have pro-business or pro-growth regulation. Can you explain what that yes. means? I mean, you know, do, does, does um, extending, yeah. you know, I'll the give... rights to sick pay or no, holiday no. pay, is that anti-business regulation? When I say, say pro-business, I give you a very simple example. So, for example, when you think about infrastructure uh, investments and the UK needs, uh, you know, infrastructure, we know that. Well, it, it, it's rather strange to see that it takes, like, double the time in the UK to be able to go, make, have that infrastructure project go through than, for example, France. I mean, that's where we need to make sure we cut down red tape, that we simplify the planning permission uh, process. That's the way I, I want to see regulation being much more pro-business. But does it worry people like you that a Labour government will be more pro-workers' rights than a Conservative one? I think it's, it's, it's critical to have uh, the, the most important stakeholders, who are the workers, working in a very stable environment. So if you improve the, the sort of their rights, that should not be an issue. That should support growth going forward. The UK is today very attractive because of the fact that it has great universities, it has the English language, it has the financial service centre in London, uh, it has an amazing tech hub, uh, whether it is in biotech, whether it is in clean tech or in fintech. All these elements are supportive for the growth. And clearly, you want to make sure that the government supports that and they support it with policies which are pro-business. Pro what about the problems of Brexit? Have they all gone away? Well, I mean, I'm not going to obviously speculate on Brexit. That was a decision that was made and it's the past. I think what is important is we need to make sure we have good trade relationship with the EU. Some Labour politicians have speculated about trying to rejoin the single market in some way. Would that be a boost to investment? Being, being, I would say, nearer the European market is for us a clear advantage. For me, it's really making sure we have stronger trade relationship with them. But I mean, I wouldn't go as far as saying that we should join the single market again. These were decisions that were made in the past. 
let's move on and let's make sure that you know we, we move on in a positive way. We have what it takes in order to do so.